Good Sunday afternoon, everybody. Come on in. It's time to get Sunday dinner going, y'all. How are you? Hope you're doing well. Hope you're having a God-blessed Sunday afternoon. I hope that it is nice and breezy wherever you are. We got a little bit of a breeze, but it's still hot, y'all. It's in the 80s, I'm sure, because I can feel it from the inside. Anywho, y'all, on the menu for today, by special request, I'm going to be doing spaghetti and meatballs with meat sauce and put some sausage in it, of course. And I'm not going to bake the spaghetti. I'm going to just cook the noodles and let them serve it over the noodles. Uh, some stir-fried cabbage. And I'm going to do a um, nice, tasty everything I got in my cabinet seasoned chicken and rice casserole, y'all. So, first of all, because that's going to take the longest to cook, I'm going to go ahead and get my chicken going because what I want to do, I've decided I want to brown my chicken a little bit, so I've seasoned it up with all my favorite seasoning. I've got some chicken thighs and some chicken drumette. You know, not the whole, yeah, drumette, so that means the pieces. So, we're going to cook them like, going to brown them up a little bit first, and then I'm going to go ahead and put them in the uh, rice get that casserole mixture going and we're going to have us some good old chicken and rice casserole i um two of the things that i'm putting in it that most people probably don't i know you uh, normally put the lipton onion soup mix i don't use that in my i use my uh, regular fresh onions i want to saute my onions and peppers and celery and all that and get that going in there i'm going to put a little bit of jerk seasoning not as much as i wanted to because guess why the jerk seasoning is hot, and I don't want to make it too hot, y'all. So we're going to have um, some real nice spicy chicken and rice casserole. Got a little bit of twist on there. I even threw a little bit, a little of lemon pepper seasoning just to give it that little tang, sort of that little uh, breezy uh, Caribbean type thing that will marry up a little bit with that uh uh, jerk season since I couldn't put as much as I wanted to. So let's get this meal going. Hope you all have a God bless day. Hope somebody is coming by, invited you out, or whatever your day is. I hope it's the best day that you've had so far. So let's get started. I got my meat already seasoned. I'm going to start with uh, whatever it matter. I'm going to try to keep a little bit of sizzle going down, or else I'm going to try not to talk so much so y'all won't think you miss nothing. So all I'm doing here is just putting the meat in the pan, okay? And y'all know I've got these kind of pans that you can put it all up on the side and let it brown. So that's one of the good things about this cooker where you can, it's a it's shaped in a wok shape. And you know a wok, you can cook all on the sides on a wok. So I'm putting it in here just to brown it, y'all, just to brown it. heat up as high as you can because you don't want any condensation to get into that pan so we don't want like a juicy thing going we want it fried like you know just with the oil i got olive oil in here make sure you put olive oil in your pan and that pan without burning it as hot as you can get it Okay, I got all my chicken in, so what I'm going to let it do now, I got the heat all the way up because I, I just want it to brown. I'm not trying to cook it all the way through, just to get it browned up enough um, that it'll keep in the pan, y'all. 
There we go. I don't like to get my camera too close to the heat. Okay? But if you notice, you know, the more meat you get in there, it's going to cook and it's going to slow down. That's why you need it all the way up, but you got to watch it to ensure that it does not burn. Okay, so we're just going to let this cook. And what I, the other thing I'm going to do while it's cooking, I'm going to make room right in the center of this pan. I probably should have used my great big old wok. But I'm going to start my peppers and onions in there too because I want them to saute before I put them into the casserole. So when I come back, I'll be ready to uh, take this out and put the casserole together. So this is um, a pound of chicken drumettes and two pounds of chicken thighs. Um, they're boneless, but the, the, the thighs are boneless, but the chicken, the drumettes have the bone knees. So you got about three pounds of meat in there that's gonna go into this casserole. And again, I seasoned it with all my favorite seasoning, uh, onion powder, garlic powder, complete seasoning, um, I, put, I even threw in some gold mountain seasoning, uh, about a tablespoon of that, a tablespoon of um, lemon pepper seasoning, just to get it going into the meat. So when you bite into it, it's not your regular everyday chicken and rice casserole, okay? And also the, the salt base in there is, gonna, is my chicken bouillon seasoning, okay? So I'll be right back shortly. Okay, now y'all, the chicken is about cooked as much as it needs to. My peppers and onions are sauteed like they need to be. I'm going to use uh, two and a half cups of rice in this uh, casserole. So what I've done is, because you know, you put the water in proportion to the rice. And I think I need to put just a little bit more right there. A good two and a half cups. So there should be plenty, plenty of rice in there. So next what I'm going to do is just go ahead and season that water with um, a teaspoon, a, a tablespoon of, um, hang on, let me just get everything going. I'm going to do a teaspoon of onion powder. Go ahead and put my teaspoon of onion powder in there. Quite a teaspoon. Okay. And I've already put in um, my everything but the kitchen sink season. That's all of my seasons combined that I love. I'm gonna throw in some, uh, a teaspoon of that chicken bouillon seasoning. Okay. And this is uh, some garlic powder, teaspoon of garlic powder. Everything a teaspoon for garlic powder. Okay. And remember now your chicken is already seasoned so you have to be careful not to put too much salt content in there because we don't want it salty. You just stir it up. And you're allowed to taste that broth that you got going on because this is actually like a chicken broth. Otherwise, you can use chicken broth for this or you can make your own. I just make my own chicken broth because I had the chicken bouillon seasoning. Okay, got all that going on in there. I'm missing something. I'm trying to figure out what. Oh, I need some black pepper. Black pepper, and I need a little bit of um, of my uh, curry. I use curry powder and cumin, not cumin. Ooh, not cumin. Turmeric. Curry powder and turmeric. I need a little bit of curry powder in there. Just gives it that wonderful, wonderful flavor. About a half a teaspoon of curry powder. <clears throat> is what we're going to put in there. And buy my turmeric. I've got uh, just bought turmeric from the store, so still in the bag, y'all. And all this stuff has no salt to it, so it's, it's very healthy. It's very good. It makes your food taste good, and it's good for you. I like those aromatic flavors that come up out of that season. So let's put our um, black pepper, about a half teaspoon of black pepper in there. Okay. I'm just gonna stir this up really, really good. And then I'm gonna go in my pan over here for my chicken. I'm gonna get my peppers and onions and put in. See, I, I sauteed my peppers and onions they're right in the center of the pan. So, get my peppers and onions out over there. Okay. Get the 
them all in there. And we're just going to mix them all in there. Just mix them all. By the way, I'm using jasmine rice. Y'all know I love jasmine rice. And this is going to, it's probably going to take a good hour for it to cook. Because remember, I got those chicken thighs. It takes a little bit longer for chicken thighs to cook. So about an hour and a half to cook that chicken all the way through and of the drum mix. So in about an hour and a half, all this water would have cooked up into it. And we'll have us a nice, wonderful non-traditional chicken casserole and all that good good goody in there and before i get done i need i've got some uh ginger garlic paste i'm gonna put in and i'm gonna put about a teaspoon of that incorporated into this don't put a lot because you know why it's salty, y'all. Salty. Okay, so have to be very careful. I found out it's salty. And of course, y'all know I'm gonna drop me a little butter in there. And then we're gonna be ready to go ahead and put it into the oven. I want some more jerk seasoning in there. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be, be very bold in there because this is look. I picked up hot and spicy. As a matter of fact, this was all they had that day, so I just picked up whatever they had. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna just be chicken hearted and put that much. How about that? About that much, y'all think it won't get hot? Okay. Because I don't want it to be real hot, y'all. I'm a, I'm a big chicken when it comes to hot stuff, because I tell you, I can't stand it when it's real, real hot like that. I, I just can't. And I don't like to make anybody else uncomfortable about eating. Because I want to be able to enjoy the food. So we're just going to go ahead and continue to um, get this all mixed and stirred in. And I think the salt content is okay because the rice is okay. My meat is well seasoned. So all this is going to cook up. It's going to meet up together in that pan and we're going to be all right. And we're, then we're going to come back and just put that um, spaghetti and meat sauce together. Okay. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and start putting the chicken in. Just lay the chicken right in on top and try to put it up on the side that you browned. <clears throat> it didn't get too brown, but it's brown enough so it won't be just real, real you know, um, I like mine just brown enough for it to look appetizing, y'all. So we're gonna put, I'll put the uh, thighs, I'll just do these thighs around the edge, around the perimeter here like so. Just lay them right in there. Lay them right in there. Okay. And then we'll go ahead and get our drum mix in like so okay right there so I put them drum mix I think I have about maybe 10 drum mix to put in there so I just put my 10 drum mix I believe it is and I think well that's pretty good that's pretty, that's, that's pretty good because I had uh, 12 pieces of I had 12 chicken thighs okay we're just gonna go around there like that. We're just gonna pull the rest of our. There we are. Now, I'm just gonna cover it, and it's going into a 375 degree oven for about uh, an hour, hour and a half. It should be done. Okay, I'll be back. Hey y'all, I'm back. It's time to get this spaghetti and meatball sauce going. I've got uh, everything set up here just to get it going. I'm using, of course, ground turkey. It, like always, it's what I use. I'll do ground beef every once in a blue moon, but I'm gonna use this one pound of ground turkey today. So gonna put it into that hot olive oil and let it start for thing.
Got my heat all the way on high, y'all. Also, I'm going to start sauteing. I'm going to saute some sausage and some uh, peppers and onions. So, it can, and since it all goes into the same dish, we're going to put it right on, over here into this pan and start sauteing. But keep that heat up real, real high, y'all. Okay, let's get our seasons going. I got my Italian seasoning. Of course, onion and garlic powder. My garlic ginger paste. Let's keep it stirring, keep it going. You know, to saute, you need the, the, the pan not burning up hot like you do when you stir fry, but you need it hot enough so that uh, you won't create a lot of juice. But in this case, if some juice gets created, it don't really matter because it's going to be a saucy dish. Got my chop. I'm going in now with my peppers, the onions. Okay, I just put in a uh, small, I'm sorry, a medium chopped onion. And, oh, you can't even see it in the pan. I'm talking to you. You can't even see it, can you? Let's get you over here. Let's get you over here then. Okay. Get some of this stuff out of the water. Let's move in. There we are. I'm sorry about that, y'all. But anyway, I just put in to the pan with the ground turkey my chopped onion and green pepper. So. I know y'all won't see everything, so there we go. You don't want to see it that way. You want to see it this way. <laughs> I got a new thing. I got a new stand. It's really nice, but I got to get used to it. But anyway, I got the peppers and onions in. They're chopped up. That is one medium onion and uh, I, uh, about a fourth of green pepper and one stalk of celery. Just chop it up as fine as you can. Saute it, and you're good to go. And I've got the ground turkey in there. There's one pound of ground turkey in there. And I've got uh, a pound and over a pound and a little over, about, yeah, about a pound and three fourths of um, meatballs is going to go into there. So we're just going to let that continue to saute while we get the rest of the ingredients ready to go in. So y'all hang tight and I shall return. Well, there we are. And all we're doing here in the pot, and the reason I'm backing off is I don't like my camera getting too hot. I know if my camera will seem like it tries to overheat, and I, I can't have, I got this iPhone, and it does some stuff sometimes. I don't know, y'all. It does some things. Okay. Now what I'm going to do while that is sauteing, I got that heat up high, high, high. I've got a half a pound, I have a half a pound of, which is a long length of beef sausage. So invest in some of these scissors, honey. This is the best thing going when it comes to cutting up stuff. So just cut up that sausage right on in that skeddy sauce. And then the last thing I will put in will be my meatballs. And I did buy pre-made meatballs. I find a brand that is good, good, good. And I don't need to go through all the extra work. You know, I've told y'all many times, I'm one of these people, and if I know how to make something and do it and whatever, and, and want to just make it from scratch, I can do that. I'm very well capable of doing that. But if I can find something that's already pre-prepared and doesn't have too many things going on with it, I'm going to buy it and I'm going to use it because I don't believe in reinventing the wheel just to say I did it. And if it's going to make it better and I got time to do it, that's a whole different story, okay? So, we got our sausage in there. We're just going to let that for the time being continue to 
Yeah. So I'm saying, and do her the best to get ready for the meatball. This is gonna be a, a good size pan of sauce. Cause I'm putting these three different meats in. So we're gonna call this our three meat spaghetti sauce. How about that? So we're gonna have ground turkey, sausage, and we're gonna have meatballs in there. So we're just gonna let that cook for a little bit and then I'm going to come back and I'll go ahead and put my meat sauce in there and put all my seasonings in it. So, hang tight. I don't know why this thing will just stay without it. But we have to do so much. I'm having to do so much. So much, y'all. So much. Okay, so... Okay, I'll be right back. Hey, y'all, I'm back. Look, child, let me tell you something. Just let me say something. I'm, I'm still cooking this spaghetti and meatball, and I'll tell y'all what I'm still left with y'all. The, the sausage and the meatballs, I'm sorry, the, the ground turkey and the sauteed onions. So I'm getting ready now to go ahead and put in my meatballs. And I already went ahead and put in my uh, seasoning. My uh, Italian seasoning. A couple of tablespoons of Italian seasoning, y'all. It's what I've got in there so far. A couple of tablespoons full. And I've got um, a tablespoon of onion powder, garlic powder. I'm going to tilt this because I don't want to keep moving it camera too close to the fire y'all but anyway more important than what I'm cooking is um, you don't never know when the Lord gonna call you to do something and you know what I am full right now I'm gonna go this is the meatballs and these are food line brand meatballs y'all they're pretty good they're pretty good I like them I'm gonna pour me about a fourth of cup of olive oil on top of them and I'm still sauteing stuff so I'm mixing now my my meat all together I haven't put any sauce in here yet so we're gonna get all this all sauteed up I'm gonna semi saute these meatballs this to get them going because you know sauteing causes your food that food to burst open and get that flavor going so we're gonna get everything all sauteed up here together like so okay y'all with me You know, I, the Lord knows that I love a good testimony. He knows I love to testify. And more than that, I love to hear a good testimony because I know about the goodness of the Lord. So I'm always excited when somebody else professes something. So anywho, I just had to answer a clarion call. Let me tell you, you never know when God is going to call you out to do something. So, you know, that scripture in the Bible, I'm going to have to look it up now. And see exactly where it is. So I can go and study that scripture. Be ye also ready. When the Lord puts something before you, when something happens that requires your assistance, your know-how, your presence, whatever, your expertise if you got any, whatever it requires of you, you got to be ready to do it. You can't be holding back in spirit, mind, or body. So I got a call to check on the child right here in the neighborhood. So I had to turn my food off and I ran on and did it. And I didn't hesitate to do it. See, that that's the whole thing. Because remember when the Lord was praying for that child in that room and somebody was in that room uh, trying to be doubtful and the Lord said, oh, bye, go on, go ahead on about your business. Well, that's the way we have to look at it. When we get asked to do something, because certainly if somebody has a crisis or emergency, especially when children are involved, you got to get yourself together and go ahead on and do what you need to do. So I went and praised the Lord it was everything was okay. And also what we have to be ready to do, because I don't know, that might have been for me, that might have been just to see if I would go or how I would go. Not that if I was going to go, but how I was going to go. And, and, and the Lord pulled me right in and let me know, okay, that's what you, you do what you needed to do. 
also be ye also ready when you get called upon to help somebody and you know and I'm going to say this because I know sometimes people get asked to do things and they won't do it but you know most of the time when you need to go sometimes you just sometimes some people just don't want to do it you know the source from when it, which it comes you know the way it comes how it comes and we have got to get our spirits and ourselves right when it comes to helping other people and stop making about ourselves all the time. So I tell God, thank you all was well. And the other thing y'all know I did, it wasn't a long prayer, but y'all know I prayed my, did my prayer. I'm going to always find a way to pray. And so, I mean, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm trying, you know, I don't like to be telling folks all uh, everything's going on, folks, and everything like that. But just, you know, suffice it to say, it was a situation that I feel good that I went and I had the opportunity to pray. And it was for a young person. And it might have been for that per that young person. I'm pouring in the spaghetti sauce. Now, I'm using Classico, tomato, and basil. I don't know if I'm going to have to put any water in this or not. We're going to see. I'm using a, let's see. A two pound jar so it's got two pounds of spaghetti sauce and I'm gonna rinse this jar a little bit y'all and, and since I'm having to rinse the jar I'm gonna go ahead and put in my fourth of a cup of uh, I put I always put some brown sugar in there to cut that uh, tart taste and I'm gonna put a can of tomatoes petite diced tomatoes in there all stirred up. Yeah. I need to put a little bit of water uh, over uh, to rinse that. A little bit more juice. I'm going to pour those tomatoes in there. And this is going to be cooking about two or three hours before it actually gets eaten. So we're just going to let it, uh, I don't know if I need all that water. Pull that because it's going to need some cook room in there, okay? But anyway, as I was saying about getting called to do things, you know, come out of your comfort zone every once in a while. We have to come out of our comfort zone sometime, and you know, and when we come out of our comfort zone, it's not necessarily that you came out, it's how you come out, too. Now, that, that makes a big difference, that, that plays real heavy with the way we're looked upon as one human being to the other. So I'm just saying all that to say this. I thank God for all his grace and his mercy. I thank God that he keeps me, that he loves me. I thank God that he sends me on missions because I'm always saying, send me, Lord, I'll go. And we say that. And sometimes we get sent and we start, you know, balling up our face and all that. I'm always saying that. Send me, Lord, I'll go. Allow the food that I receive for the nourishment of my body to strengthen my body to do what you need me to do when you send me somewhere. So I tell God, thank you that when I got to that assignment, all was well. That baby come out of there grinning and smiling. I was excited. And his folks was excited. So I just wanted to share that with you and just say to you, when you when somebody calls and asks you to do something, you know, sometimes it might be inconvenient and you don't want to do whatever, you know, just kind of pull back every once in a while and, and just let the natural course of things happen. And the natural course is to go to somebody who is in need and go and do what they need to get done. So anyway, that tastes pretty good. Now, when you get to this point with your spaghetti and meat sauce, where it's, it's got to cook, you got to give it a chance not to cook through so all those seasons will go through. If you want more salt, more sugar, more whatever else, then that's up to you. You put it. But that's my basic recipe for spaghetti and meatballs and sausage. Um, meat sauce and we're going to serve this of course i'm going to cook some spaghetti noodles we're going to serve those spaghetti 
noodles and we're just gonna enjoy it and have a good time with it. Now if you if you don't want like I put the brown sugar in, some people don't want brown sugar. If you don't want it, leave it out. And of course I got one more ingredient that I always put in my spaghetti. Ketchup. My fourth cup of ketchup. And like I said, if you don't want or everything seasoning wise that I just put in and I always add me some extra of um where is it my Italian I love lots of Italian seasoning in my spaghetti sauce because I want to taste that flavor and if you got some uh you know basil leaves and, and all that kind of stuff throw them in there so I'm putting me another tablespoon in, in mine okay but anyway I just you know I wanted to share that little testimony with you you know and on the way uh, to doing where I had to go which was just just right you know right right here um, I'm praying all the way I'm praying all the way so Lord when I get there you know if something is there to be found then Lord help me to be able to do what I need to do and if it's nothing mm, let me relish in that and it was nothing but a reassurance for somebody else so I tell God, thank you. I'm gonna move on now to making my stir fried shredded cabbage. And I think I might make some corn muffins, y'all. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay, y'all, I had these um, mushrooms in the refrigerator. I need to go ahead and cook them because I had, had them left over from night before last. So I'm gonna put, I put butter and garlic and all that on and I'm gonna run through the oven with some Parmesan cheese for about 15, 20 minutes and we're gonna see what happens, y'all. I don't wanna put them in, I wanted to put them in my spaghetti but I thought, man, uh, somebody might come by and want some spaghetti who can't eat mushrooms. So I'm gonna cook them and I can still have my mushrooms. So just a quick little side dish, y'all. Onion powder, garlic powder, some butter, turn them upside down and put all that seasoning and run them into the oven. Uh, 375 is what I'm gonna have it on right now. But after that, I might turn it on to dry up some of that juice in there. But just go ahead and try it if you ever have mushrooms left over. So be right back. Okay, we're back with the cabbage. I'm gonna go ahead and get the cabbage to go in. This is a dish I've done many, many times. I'm gonna start out with my peppers and onions. One large onion, three of those little uh, multiple peppers chopped up, saute them, and olive oil, season them. When they get uh, soft and translucent, we put cabbage in, teaspoon of garlic powder in there to season those onions and peppers. And just stir fry them around in there like that. Keep that heat on high because you don't want a lot of juice to get off in there. And one phase, uh, in about 15 minutes, all this can be done. So it's going to take about 10 minutes for these peppers and onions to get done. So that's why I start them ahead of time. And then I'll go ahead and start putting the cabbage in. So you just going to let that cook. And when you see them again, it's going to be stir fried peppers and onions with ready cabbage and I am using this I, I bought a big bag of cold sauce cabbage this is what I use cabbage and carrots it looks like so you just start dropping it in and tossing it until you get it all stir fried in there again it takes about 15 minutes to get that done so I'll be right back 